Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In the previous videos, we were doing relational algebra operations using MapReduce. So far, we have covered many of the operations such as selection, projection, union, intersection, difference, and we also have covered the natural join operation. Now, in this video, we will be covering the last operation that is grouping and aggregation using MapReduce. So first, let me explain you what grouping and aggregation means. Grouping means to group certain attributes according to the specification of the client. And aggregation means to perform certain operations such as sum, min, max, average and count. So you can perform these particular operations on a set of attributes that is called as aggregation. So we will be doing this with the help of MapReduce algorithm and inside the MapReduce algorithm under the map task first we need to iterate over all the values. Let's say we have representatives of attributes as A, B and C. A is that set of attribute to which we need to perform the grouping operation. B is that set of attribute to which we need to perform the aggregation operation and C is that set of attributes that we need to discard. And finally, under the map task, we need to emit the a comma b. And once the map task is done, under the reduce task, we just have to emit key part as the attribute a comma b and theta of the values section, which means we need to perform the aggregation operation on those elements which are present inside the value section. So that was the algorithm. If you haven't understood it yet, don't worry, we'll be seeing this particular example and by the end of this video, you will be aware of the entire algorithm as well as step by step solving of the example. So let's say we have two map workers and each map worker is having two tables, table 1 and table 2. Now we need to group by A and B attribute and we need to perform the aggregation operation on the C attribute. Now you can see that nowhere it is mentioned that B attribute is playing certain role. So we can simply discard it and then we need to focus on the attributes a b and c now as per the algorithm we need to iterate over all the values and emit the key part as the set of attributes which are coming under the grouping operation and under the b part we need to mention those attributes which are coming under the aggregation operation in the given problem statement we need to group a and b that means under the key part these two attributes a and b will come and we need to aggregate c that means under the values section we need to mention the elements that are present inside the c attribute so let's start with the first step first step is to convert all the records in the form of key value pairs so let me quickly create the structure of the first step so as you can see we have created the structure of the two tables now Let's see the first record. The first record contains 1 and 2 under A and B attributes. So we'll write it under the key section because we are not going to perform aggregation operation on it. We are just going to perform the grouping operation. Now under the value section, we need to mention the element that is present under the C attribute because we are going to perform the aggregation operation on it. Now since the element is 10, so we'll enclose it in a list. Now the next record is 2, 3 and so 2, 3 will come under the key section and the record 2 which is coming under the C attribute will come under the value section. Similarly, we have next record as 1, 2. Now you can observe inside the database we already have the key 1, 2. So why to create a new section for it? Instead, we can just append the value that is associated with that key 1, 2 in the list that we have already created. So 9 will come after 10 inside the list of the key that is associated with it. Now if we look at the next table under the first map worker, so you can see that we have the record 4, 2 and 7. 4, 2 will come under the key section and 7 will come under the value section. Similarly, we have to do it for the rest of the records. Now you can see that we are done with the map worker 1. Now let's shift to map worker 2. And inside the map worker 2 also, you need to perform the same thing. Just make sure that whenever you find the duplicated key, you just have to append 
the value that is associated with it with the previous value which was there in the same key so you can see that for key 2 comma 2 we have two elements in the list under the value section which is 8 comma 4 i hope it is clear to you all so we have successfully converted all the records in the form of key value pairs now i hope you know that after the first step we are supposed to apply a hash function to the result that we have got after the first step and we apply this hash function to divide the entire table into two parts and these parts will be independently called as tables so that we can switch one of the table from the first map worker with one of the table from the second map worker now this switching is done to avoid the duplicated keys might be present in both the map workers so now in this step we just have to divide the entire key value table in each map worker into two key value tables and if there are total five key value records in the original key value table then we need to write first three records in the first key value table and next two records in the next key value table i hope it is clear so let me quickly write the same for both the map workers and let me show you the final result of this particular step so as you can see i have written the first three records in the first key value table and the next two records in the next key value table similarly for the map worker 2 also i have done the same so i hope you might have got an idea about this particular step now once we are done with this particular step we need to swap one of the table from one of the map worker with other map worker so let's say we'll be swapping the second table from the first map worker with the first table from the second map worker and this swapping is usually done to avoid the redundancies that may be caused because of the duplicated keys that may be present in any of the map worker so the next step will be similar to this step everything will remain same in the next step which is present inside this particular step just the thing is you have to swap the second table from the first map worker with the first table from the second map worker so let me quickly copy paste and swap these two tables so now you can see that i have copy pasted the same result from the above step and now i swap the second table from the first map worker with the first table from the second map worker something like this and now we are done with this step also so i hope you are understanding what we are doing here now you can clearly see after swapping we have got the redundant keys 1 comma 2 from the first map worker so similarly we can find the duplicated keys 3 comma 2 from the second map worker also so now what we can do is we can club these two particular keys into a single key and then we can append the value that is associated with the second key with the value that is associated with the first key something like this the first key 1 comma 2 was having the value 10 comma 9 and now we have erased the second 1 comma 2 key and the value that was associated that was 1 we have now appended it to this 10 comma 9 and now the value becomes 10 comma 9 comma 1 i hope it is clear for the first map worker we are done now similarly for the second map worker we have the duplicated key 3 comma 2 the value that was associated with that duplicated key was 5 so we can append that 5 value to this particular value that is associated with the first 3 comma 2 key something like this now i hope that this particular step is clear now in the next step we just have to club these two key value tables in each map worker into a single key value table and also note one thing that the swapping task will be done with the help of the reducer workers our map workers will get converted into reducer workers and will swap and then reduce the data and get the final result so now as we know that the two key value tables that was associated with each reducer worker will now get clubbed into a single key value table and all the records will be clubbed into a single key value table so let me quickly write all the records and then show you the final result of this particular step so now you can see we are done with the reducer worker 1 similarly we are also done with the reducer worker 2 now we are done with this particular step now we have got 
the value in the form of list. Now let's go to the final step and write our answer after applying the aggregation and grouping operation. So now if we observe the algorithm, the algorithm says that the key part is your grouping attributes, which was in our case was A and B and the values part contains the attributes that were coming under the aggregation operation. As we know, the attributes A and B was coming under the grouping operation. So we'll be writing the attributes A, B and since the aggregation operation was performed on the attribute C, we'll be writing a max column after the A and B attribute column. Why this max column? Because we are going to perform the maximum operation on the C attribute. Now if you observe the previous step, in the key section we have the first record as 1 comma 2. So this says that 1 is under the A attribute and 2 is under the B attribute. And inside the value section we have all the values from the C attribute. So we will be taking the maximum of these values that are associated in this particular list 10, 9 and 1. So the maximum is 10. So hence we have written 10. Similarly we have to do it for the next records 2, 3 will come under A and B respectively and since there is a single element 2 present in the list hence we will be writing that, that element only under the max column. Similarly we have to do it for the rest of the records. Now I will tell you for the record 2 comma 2. So we have to write 2 comma 2 under the A and B attributes and the maximum of 8 and 4 is 8. So we have to write 8 under the max attribute. So I hope this is clear. Similarly, we have to do it for the reducer worker 2 also. Let me quickly write the result and let me show you that. So now you can see we are done with both the reducer workers and this will be the final result. So I hope you have understood. If you go by the manual method also, you will be getting the same answer after applying the grouping and aggregation operation. Similarly, you can perform other operations such as finding the minimum, finding the count, sum or average of the entire elements present in a particular attribute. So I hope this particular example is very much clear and through this example, the algorithm is also clear to you all. If you guys have any single doubt, you can just post it in the comment section. I'll be happy to solve it. Apart from doubts, if you have some reviews or suggestions, then please post it also. For more such videos, do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Also hit the bell icon and don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day ahead.